Hey there everyone, welcome back to Press for Truth TV. Thanks so much for joining me once again today. We have an extra special broadcast lined up for you today. Uh, today we are joined on the line by Victoria Grant. And uh, this young lady knows more about the Bank of Canada and this whole debt-based system than probably most Canadians or, or most people out there for that matter. And uh, she recently gave an excellent speech to a crowd of over 600 people at a business conference outlining some of the problems with the Bank of Canada. Um, so, uh, Victoria, thank you so much for joining us here today at Press for Truth TV. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's great to have you here. So, first of all, uh, just a question I'm curious about, and I'm sure a lot of other people are as well, is how did you first become interested in this topic about the Bank of Canada and about this debt-based system, what, what got you interested in this topic? Well, I first became interested when my dad started to do research and he would talk about this issue every day. So after a while, I became interested and wanted to write my speech on this topic and tell other people about it. Yeah, well, you did such a great job with that speech. And I'll put a link in the description so people can check that out. Uh, how, how do you feel the, um, the speech went and, and what was the crowd's reaction like? I think that it went amazing and the crowd's reaction was so incredible. To me, it felt like they were all so excited to have a 12-year-old girl get up on a stage in front of all these people and say a speech on such an important topic. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is so important. And, and this topic, not a lot of people... Uh, out there know a lot about it so maybe if you could briefly um, explain for some people what what is the problems that we have with the Bank of Canada right now um, well I think that is that it is not so much the Bank of Canada that is the problem but the private banks and the government they are making us pay taxes and interest that we shouldn't even have to pay and they say that if we don't pay that we will be thrown in jail and yet they are stealing 160 million dollars a day and they don't get punished for it yeah I, I couldn't agree with you more that certainly is uh, a major part of the problem is these private banks who we are bor borrowing from. Um, so what, what in, in your, your research, what did you find out is something that, um, that Canadians need to do or, or how should the bank change? What do you think needs to change? I think that we need to start using the Bank of Canada and tell the bank, private bankers that we are not going to pay back the debt, then throw the corrupt bankers and politicians in jail. After, I think that we need to create a better system where we have authority over our own money. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more. That's very well said. Um, just like we used to have before 1974, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's a, a very good point. And, um, you know, when, when I was speaking with you a little bit earlier, I uh, mentioned to you, I, I asked you if you have ever heard of the Goldsmith's Tale. And uh, you said, oh, yes, I, you know, I, I've heard of that. And uh, you, you were originally going to have it included in your speech. Um, but uh, because of time, they, um, it, you didn't include it in the speech. But I don't mean to put you on the spot, but how would you like to tell a little bit of that story right now for, for people who might not have heard of that? I'll tell it. <laughs> what I know. Okay, so there would be a goldsmith, and people would go to that goldsmith and bring their gold or silver to him and ask if they could put it in his vault. And so he would write an IOU and give it to the person saying, you can come back anytime that you would like and come back and get your gold or silver. But this kept happening, and but the goldsmith soon realized that people weren't coming back for their gold and silver. What they were actually doing was giving the IOU to a person that they were buying something from, like food or clothes or anything like that. And the person would cr cross out the number on the IOU and write the new amount. And the goldsmith realized this, and he decided to lend out the people's gold and silver to other people. Yeah, that's that's exactly how it works. You 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 you've told that perfectly, and it is a very in, uh, important story uh, to understand because we have to look at 
how things happened in the past in order to understand uh, what's going on now. And I even noticed that you mentioned how this, this whole taking on the banks thing goes back a long time ago. Uh, in fact, you mentioned how even in, in the Gospels, in the book of Matthew, under chapter 21, it shows how uh, Jesus was one of the first guys who, who flipped over the table of the money changers. Um, it, it was one of the only times in his ministry that he showed any kind of signs of anger, but it was because the money changers were doing their business in the temple, and he, and he flipped over the table. So I'm, I'm glad that you told that story because, um, you know, that, that's kind of originally the, the first guy who really started taking on the banks. Um, so I'm glad you included that in your speech. And yeah. so, yeah, great job. Uh, great job once again. And um, so just in, in closing here, I was curious if, um, you know, if, if you maybe had any kind of advice for other kids your age or anyone for that matter about how they can learn more about this topic and what can they do? Where where would you suggest they go? Well, I just want to say to those people to start doing your own research and to try and make a difference. Don't be afraid to make a difference. If somebody says that you are not able to do this or that you are too young, prove them wrong. Show them that you can do it. Absolutely. Well, you've certainly set an excellent example in showing that you can do that. It took a lot of courage for you to get up in front of all those people and give that speech. So I want to thank you for your work and uh, let you know that you're being, you've been very inspirational to many Canadians <laughs> and uh, you're, you're giving us some, some hope for the future. So I want to con uh, encourage you to continue uh, doing your studies and doing the great work that you are doing. And maybe we'll have you on again uh, on this show again sometime in the future. Thank you. Um, do you mind if I ask you a question, Dan? Sure. Um, what do you think the solution is regarding the fixing of our economy? Well, I think that you are definitely on the right path in the sense that we have to remove the power of issuing currency from the private offshore banks. And we need to restore it back to the way it was before 1974 when the Bank of Canada, when we had our ability to print our own money for the people and by the people. So it was in the 70s when, you know, we joined the, uh, the G7 and um, at that point uh, Canada was on the international stage and that's when we started borrowing from these private banks at interest. So I would have to agree with your solution, which is that we have to move away from having private banks issuing our currency and get it back to the way that it used to be, uh, where the Bank of Canada prints our own money for and by the people. Would you agree? Yes, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, uh, Victoria, well, thank you so much once again for joining me here today. And uh, you keep up the great work, and I'll talk to you again later, okay? Thank you. Bye. See ya.